Yo, guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing Guess the Bank Robber. We have five people, four of them are actors, making up a full story, and one of them was convicted of robbery. And we're gonna figure this out. First round, we're going off looks who we think committed this robbery. It feels like the guy in the middle is trying to be like the guy on the end. Does that make sense? Like yeah, number yeah. three is trying to be like number five. Like he's his stand-in. Yes. The second guy makes me feel really safe. Y'all look alike, Zach. That's like that, that could be your brother. That's why I feel safe. Wait, you don't feel Wait. safe with us? Hold on. No. I honestly think Zach probably think we the robbers. <laughs> now I'm not gonna lie though, second from the last, he, he looks like he steals crypto. Oh. Can we just point out that you have no facial hair and that like is it. one sign of criminality? Uh, like just cause you don't wanna leave no evidence. Yeah. yeah, you have some hair on the back that you forgot to shave. So yeah. I know you're not committing no crimes. You, you leaving evidence. Okay. I will say too, the guy with the Dodgers, anybody that buttoned all the way up they Dodgers jersey, that's yeah. just violence. I tend to not trust the guys with that little patch in the middle of their facial hair. Yeah, but that gives me like, actor. That gives me like, I'm gonna go play a bad guy today. Let me get the patch going. He don't look like a robber. He looked like a person I'd be pissed if it was the daughter or like the dad of the daughter I was about to date. Right. You get to the door, he get there. He like, damn, I could get killed. Okay. I've, I think I've seen it. He was a guest star on the Lopez show. <laughs> All right, let, let's lock in our, our early vote. I'm going number five. That's my vote first round. I feel like that's just a very stereotypical yeah. guess. Why is that your pick? Everyone else to me is giving actor and number five to me is giving real life. I'm going with Dodgers. You're going with Dodgers. I've seen the news. What you see on the news? I saw I saw a guy in a Dodgers thing stole stuff. That's a lot of white people stealing Crazy. stuff too, running into these stores, Zach. Also, yeah, but they don't arrest us, we get away with it. I know. <laughs> I'm gonna go, uh, my man with the Hawaiian shirt. I feel like that's where he put his money at. <laughs> In the shirt? Nah, that's where it's buried at, Hawaii. Okay, Denny. I think this little crypto Bitcoin guy, I think him in the gray. Did he just wink, did he just wink at you? No, I think that might be like a tick, but I think he he looks like he done been, been through some things. Lawrence? I'm stereotypically going with number five. All right, well, we got our picks in. Number one, what is your name? Where are you from? And tell us how much money you stole. My name is Nick Ballard, I'm from New York, and I saw $85,000. What part of New York? Westchester, Mount Vernon. New That's Rochelle is over there, right? He lost the entire New Rochelle is a very nice neighborhood. You telling me you out here stealing? If you're from a nice neighborhood, 85K is not worth stealing. Right, that's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Number two, oh. what is your name, where are you from, and how much money did you steal? My name is Dan Rausch, I'm from Boston, Massachusetts, and I stole 200 million Italian lira. He did it. How much is that in American? About 16,000 US. He did it. And he's from Boston. 000? Boston got some of the best bank robbers. Okay, Ben Affleck. They do, they got, they, it's just true. <laughs> Boy, watch tell one time. <laughs> I texted her, we're doing Guess the Robber. All last night he was watching. Ben, ben Affleck movies. I, Earlier you mentioned you shaved your head in the dark. Can I ask why? <laughs> he mentioned that? No, he didn't. It was actually in the shower. I didn't have a mirror, so it was kind of in the dark. How could you not buy a mirror with 16,000 USD? Oh, that was in 1990, so. Uh, okay, number three. What? Oh. Hey, what so, sorry to bother you. I didn't want to bother you. Sorry, I'm just, honestly, what, what, is, what is your name? Where are you from? And how much money did you steal? Um, my name is Gabriel Ricardez. They call me G-Money. I'm from Los Angeles, California. I've stole over $100,000 in smash and grabs from uh, LA all the way to Mexico. <laughs> that sounds real. That does sound real. 100,000 in smash and grabs? I've had Tapatio. Like Just want to let you know I'm on your side. My, Zach not going to make it out of here. Zach going to get smashed and grabbed. Watch. <laughs> You stole a hundred thousand dollars in smash and grab from LA to Mexico. Where in Mexico? Tijuana. What? Which one was your biggest hit? Um, Tijuana, probably. That doesn't oh, make yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah, that don't yeah, make yeah. sense. That's not where you would get the most amount of money. I will disagree with that because Tijuana is when you can rob the Americans that bring their money over to go spend it. How do you know that? Because I've been to Tijuana. Wait, 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 wait. Lawrence, he said smash and grabs, not robbery. People from America drive down to Mexico, go to Tijuana to either do the hotel or Hong Kong, that bring their car, leave their shit there, purpose plate to smash and grab. No, smash and grab no, is in the no, store. Oh, I thought, I thought he was talking about robbing cars. That's where they got the purest gold and the less security. Yeah, so stores, you're not smashing and grabbing right. people. Of course not. Oh, okay. I was wrong. All right, Zuckerberg, number four. What is your name, where are you from, how much money did you steal? My name is Bogdan, I'm from Ukraine, uh, 12,000. USD or? USD. How did you steal it? Small bank. You know what you look like? You ever seen X-Men? Yeah. Quicksilver? Oh, you're in and out real fast. I have a similar sex life. What I want to ask you is, where, did you feel bad about it? Um. 
to be honest, I kind of did. Number five, what is your name, where are you from, and how much did you steal? I'm Scar, I'm from South Central LA, and I stole close to $6,000. And then your brother Mufasa, did you feel bad when you let him go? We not gonna make it out of here, f***ing Zach. 6,000 is a reasonable amount to steal. What, what happened? How did you steal it? Uh, it was a woman's clothing store, and um, I knew the person that worked there. Oh, inside job. Did you expect it to be more than 6,000 in there or you knew how much it was going to be in nah, there? Nah, I didn't. I had no idea. Did you go in expecting women and possibly titties and then none of them were in there, so it's like you got nothing else to do, might as well. Nah, just cash, just yeah. cash. I don't think it's Nick, potentially Dan. I don't think it's G Money. To me, it's going to come down to Dan, Bo, and Scar. I can rock with that. Dan, Bo, and Scar. Exactly. Those are probably my top three. Dan, what do you do for a living? I'm a decentralized finance consultant. You steal and then they let you work we and finance? Money. It's crypto, it's borderline finance and like fiction. Also, you said you stole 200 million in, in Italian liras or whatever. So you did that in Italy? Correct. What's your favorite Italian food? Oh, pasta. Heard of it. Okay, he's good. <laughs> <laughs> how, how often do you go back to Italy? Every few years. They let you back? That got him. See, that's what I was doing. You're not going back to Italy every few years after you committed this big of a crime. Where did you get arrested at though, here or there? I have not been arrested for this. Statute of limitations is over so I can speak about it. Nick, you said you stole $85,000. Yep. That's a lot of money. What'd you do with it? I lost it. The cops took it. What color were the cops? White. Yeah, that checks out. <laughs> okay, Nick, wh when was this? 2007. And wh what do you do for a living now? Uber Eats driver. That checks out. From 85,000 to driving for Uber can't Eats, like he can't get a good job. What, what, what's the amount where it becomes like larceny or grand larceny? Like what's the amount where it's like not getting a job is difficult? Well, it all depends, it all depends if they put a felony on your record. Right, so I'm saying what, when does it become a felony? At 10,000? It's Prop 57, anything that steals over $950 is a felony. So that man knows his shit. Yeah. Gee, money, you sound like a smart man. In college, did you write some essays? <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell y'all something about the fact that he knows that. That means the man has done his research. That don't necessarily mean he's been through it. He could be a method actor. Nick, do you have any family? Yes. Where's your family at? New York. Did they know you committed this crime? Yep. What'd they think about it? They disowned me. Can we just, can we put, poke a hole in Nick's thing right now? Where are you from in Westchester? What's the streets? Mount Vernon, Gramilton Avenue. Oh, that's real. Brother, so you went to jail? Yes. How long did you go to jail for? 10 years. Did they touch on you? <laughs> Why is no. That, a good that no wasn't confident to me. Do he look like he got touched on? <laughs> I ain't gonna lie though, Nick do look like he probably got violated in the shower. <laughs> you not people where I'm going, cause that's why he don't keep facial hair. Cause if he was somebody's madam, they don't let you keep facial hair. Madam. Cause you can't get the come out. Yo, y'all are crazy. <laughs> I guess so. But what do you do for work now? No. <laughs> like Put the that. subtitles on for both. Like yeah, right now I'm a, I'm a photographer at the restaurant, kind of like a hustler. What restaurant are we talking about? I mean, we have di we have different locations around the city, yeah. So you're from Ukraine? Yes. When did you move to America? In 2015. What year did you steal the money? Before I moved to the US. So this is in the Ukraine? Yeah. He also works at a restaurant. He's a freelance photographer. So that's probably a job you could get if you've been a convicted yeah. felon. What's your normal f-stop? 1.8. What the f are you talking about? Camera, camera talk. Camera Sorry, that's white people stuff. Talk. Connor got a boner back there, I can tell. <laughs> does that question make you believe that he does that? I don't know anything about F-Stop. <laughs> Scar, what do you do for work now? I'm a tattoo artist. Did you get convicted when you robbed a, a clothing store? Nah, I didn't get caught, but uh, karma got me after that. What happened? I had a lot of bad luck. Um, I bought a radio with that money. Uh, they stole it. Uh, and then they stole my car. And then my girl left me. Like, it was all bad. But what did you actually buy with the six? That You ain't bought no car with six thousand. Nah, I already had the car. I bought a stereo. I bought some clothes. Uh, I bought some perfumes. Just all kind of just random stuff. Just pretty much wasted it. Like. G Money. What do you do for work now? Uh, I'm a car salesman. I'm a professional gambler. What, what do you gamble? What's, what's, the, what's your game of choice? Poker. How, what's the most amount of money you've gambled in one go? About 50,000. When did you when did you commit this crime? 2001, did 10 years with halftime. It's something nonviolent. 
What do you do for work? Well, how you make how you making all this money? I buy cars at the car, dealer, car dealership license. I buy them and I sell them. But to, not that's not enough that's money enough to, to throw around 50k. 50, yeah. That was half of your score. You said you only scored 100k. I said over, and you're making three thousand dollars a car very easily. Trust me. No, it seemed like he playing around with too much money. Yeah, yeah. 50k is a lot to just off that's crazy but zach made a good point if he's a professional gambler he yeah. could be using the gambling money to do it have you heard of the triton poker tournament where is that tournament at it's by atlanta i'm sure is no it? where is the next tournament gonna be um they have it every year right here in las vegas no in monte carlo Whoa. oh because i'm gonna be there that's you slipping g money nick what was the name of your private school that you went to mount vernon what you so good at this. Puff Daddy went to Mount Vernon. So he did Denzel. He, he goes, so did Denzel. That's an actor. That's someone who looks up to Denzel. Right. And it's probably like, Denzel went to the same school I went to. If you went to Mount Vernon, who's the best athlete to come out to your school? Ben Simmons. Hold on, hold on. Ben Simmons went to school in Florida. He never went to, he never went to school in New York. You went to Clam Brook. That's a private school. <laughs> You're a good kid. But for real though, Ben Simmons went to school in Florida. So he's X'd out. Scar, did you have any accomplices with you? No. Bo? G-Money? How many? I got five people watch out for me. Dan? My partner and his girlfriend who worked at the bank. That you robbed? Yeah. He's robbing. So they were insiders? Yes. He, uh, she was an insider. He was my best friend and we were in Europe together. So how long did this plan take? It literally took like three weeks at most. Did the alarm go off in the bank? No, she literally just, it was an inside job. So she handed us basically $16,000 under the premise that it was $100 while nobody else was looking, while we created a distraction. Did you give her any of the money? No, and she didn't want any of it. She thought that she was pregnant by my partner who was uh, the third guy in the heist. So she was totally in love with him. What's your partner's name? Tim. Is that who you left there? She was left there, yeah. Let me tell you why he's lying. He would never name his partner just like yeah. that so fast. Yeah. Well, no, he said it's over the statute right. of limitations. Right. But with you, you wouldn't put Tim out like that. Yeah. Well, and it just sounds like a fake ass name, Tim. Yeah. And he said it real quick, and the girlfriend didn't want no money. She, she thought she was gonna get some. She wound up not even seeing us after that. Knock it off. Uh, Nick, what kind of car do you drive now? A Toyota. Dan, oh, Prius, G Money, whatever I'm driving for the day, you know. And what did you drive today? Doesn't matter what I drove today. <laughs> ah, <laughs> driving me crazy, Bo. Toyota Camry Hybrid. Scar, you got one of them bikes with the, that you be up here with, huh? I do have a collection of bikes. I knew it. But I get around on um, public transportation, walking. Ain't no shame in my game. I feel that. Like Damn, that's, that's a bar. Oh, he's the realest one up here. I don't know that he's a criminal, but he's not an actor. I just, I just, it's it's too easy to say scar. But also yeah. keep in mind, bro, he said only 6,000. That's a very believable story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there anybody as authentic as this man on this panel? No, I baby Bo. I would say, I would say, I think Bo's pretty authentic. Bo's pretty real. Do any of you guys use weapons in your robberies? If you did, raise your hand. Okay. G Money, what, what was the weapon that you used? A mallet. Bo, what kind of weapon did you use? It's kind of like a toy gun that looked heavy and real. The way he smiled, he was like proud of it. Like, <laughs> yeah. like I got them. Scar, what kind of weapon did you use? It was a rusty hammer. So none of these are violent weapons. Yeah. All right, let's start with you, Nick. Nick, tell us the story <laughs> from start to finish, from you coming up with the idea to the execution all the way to prison. Do your vocal exercises first, though. So basically, I stole 85,000 from my ex-girlfriend, she had a settlement check. She never cashed the check. And then I came down, she cashed it, put it in the trunk of her car. We went to go visit her niece at Walmart. While she went in the store, she told me to stay in the car and I jacked the money in the car and left. You, you don't look like the type. That's cap. Well, and my thing is like, what dumbass no, girl like cashed out 85K, put it in her trunk and then go to Walmart? What race was your girlfriend? White. Yeah. Oh. Now I believe a little bit more. Yeah, now, now, now. <laughs> now all of a sudden. That was you. I, I was, I was testing out the handshake because I didn't get it right earlier. I think Denzel would be disappointed in that performance and let me tell you why. Your girlfriend. Ex-girlfriend. Okay, whatever. She has far too much information yeah. on you for yeah. you to get away with a crime like that. That's why I got caught. So the girlfriend told on you? Yes, because I took her car. You take the car, where, where do you go? What happens? I went back home okay. to Colorado. You get to Colorado, you have the car and the money, now what? I got caught. Cops are waiting for me. This is the dumbest crime ever. So you, you take the car with 85,000, you drive back to your house in Colorado. What were you thinking? I was high. 
For that yeah, long? I don't, I don't you were high for that long. That's a, that, how long of a drive is that? Bro, you're, this is cap. You would be the worst criminal ever. Yeah, I say, our viewers, man, donate to my boy acting classes. Dan, what's the story? Basically in 1990, my buddy and I went to Rome. He got a girl pregnant. She worked at a bank. She came up with the idea as a joke. We all took it seriously. And three weeks later, we did it. I'm not gonna lie though. Earlier though, he said she thought she was pregnant. So why are you lying to me, Dan? I have no idea whether she was pregnant or not. Why did you just oh, say yeah. that she was pregnant? She she thought she was pregnant. Dan, walk me through the day at the bank when you stole the money. Basically, we waited until right before it closed. We made sure that there were a bunch of people behind us and nobody in front of us. I would go to one teller, he would go to another, his girlfriend. She had the money all lined up, low lira notes on top and the 10,000 lira notes stacked up. We figured out that the only amount she could hand over without like drawing attention was stacks about that high, which would be about 15 grand US. And that's what she did. She handed it. I made a big stink with the other teller. I was screaming so that the security guard and everybody behind us in line would look at me. I was pounding on the desk, knocking pens over. What were you saying? I was saying, hey, wait, where's my money? In English though, we literally scripted everything out and made sure, because my Italian was terrible, that in English I'd say, where's my money? I put money in here and I want it right now. So the security guard would come over, escort me out while my friend was walking out with the money and he would leave before me. I would leave afterward. He leaves with the money. You get escorted out by security. I just put you outside. They literally didn't even escort me out. I just saw it on the court of my eye that he walked out. And 60 seconds later, I was like, you guys, va fangu. And then you walk out with him and the money. No, no, he was gone at that point. We went to meet up later that night at our squat and literally the landlord had thrown all of our stuff out, so. Why? Because we hadn't paid our rent. You were only there for three weeks. How you gonna pay rent in three weeks? Bro, over here lying and you ain't good at it. How many people were in the bank when you went? Literally, there were 10 people behind us. You said you went to the bank before it closed. Right after work in Italy, everyone was there. We timed it. We watched it for weeks to make sure that there would be a lot of people. You watched it for three weeks? <laughs> Not three weeks. Because <laughs> you was only there for three weeks. You said this is her boyfriend. They have been together for how long? Literally just since uh, we got there in Europe, in, uh, in Italy. But so three weeks? We were only there for like, literally there for like a week before they hooked up and a month later this happened. She met this man for a week and she was ready to do a bank robbery with him and, and she, she was, was pregnant, pregnant after a week? That doesn't make any sense. When you say literally too much, that means you're lying. I, I've been in, in a lot of relationships and I've said literally, a lot, you're lying. Off the math alone, that doesn't make sense. Yeah. She wouldn't know she's pregnant after a week. One week, if this was his girlfriend, he would have been to her job and done checked on her. They would have known this man's face. Dan, I just want to see if you remember your lines. What is the girlfriend's name? Claudia. And the partner's name? Tim. Okay. Ooh. At least you remember the lines. So then you get back to your house, the landlord throws you out because you didn't pay a rent, and then what happens next? That night we decide to take a train to Naples. The, the, with the girlfriend? No. We just figured out that it would be too much drama, that it would just, I feel really bad about that. She was supposed to get a cut of it. She didn't really even want anything. We know this man is lying. Let's just go on to get G-Money. All right, G-Money, I, <laughs> I think yours is gonna be really interesting. A lot of executives watch this show, like from Netflix, so. It's your time, G. There's not much to tell, there's just it's a five-man team, but it always changes, but that's comfortable, so we want to have five-man. Females and males are included. Some people follow the store owners. Some people keep watch, and uh, the muscle, like me, actually go in and, and do the deed. Sometimes we'll hit two or three uh, places at a time. We go to TJ or to the casino and try to clean up the money. Uh, how did you get caught? Snitches get stitches. Oh. Hey, who's snitching on G-Money, man? Y'all ain't sh how long have you had this operation? Uh, when I got out, it started all back on again. Well, how'd you when get you in, out? buddy? No, he's talking about prison when he got out of prison. When yeah, how prison? did he get into prison? He got caught. Do I'm saying, was this operation, is that the one that got you in? And you walked out and started doing it again? Like Who crime? stops? Wouldn't they be watching this man? Half of these guys are doing smash and grabs besides me. Those they got records and they've done it before. What are you talking about? If you had to pick like a favorite part of prison, what would that be? Uh, the federal prison, probably the best. Because state sucks. State sucks. They don't give you nothing. In federal prison, they got everything. They treat you like a king. I mean, I might be in there for tax fraud one day, but nothing too serious. But um, yeah, you can give me some notes. What, how did you get caught? Walk me through like the day you got caught. One of the, I can't specifically say, but somebody in, in the crew pretty much got caught doing some dumb stuff, got caught with a lot of money, and uh, they informed, they just, some of us are still uh, all right, but I was one of the ones that took the heat. So, so did you get caught in the act or they just kind of did an arrest house warrant, show up to your house, boom, we got you on this? I got caught in the act, but uh, believe it or not. Uh, My mom's walked out on me before I get it. Somebody snitched on you. 
that was in your crew, and then you went and did a heist or a smash and grab, and the cops was waiting for you there? No, they just filmed me and waited until I came out with all my crew, followed me down, and they had all the footage, and it was just easy from there. Usually, when the cops are informed about something like that, they're not gonna wait for you to take it and watch the camera footage. They're just gonna wait, and then as soon as you try to do the smash and grab, out. arrest. I wanna get back to my original question. How long have you had this operation? Because you're the, you're the lead guy, you're the boss? One of, yeah. How many people are in this crew and how long have you had this operation? Uh, well, like I tell you, I can't say how many, but it's usually about five. He's lying, because I just told you, he, if somebody snitches on you and they say, hey, they're gonna hit this lick, the cops are not gonna watch you do it. Yes, they do. The DA needs a case to build it yeah, on you. They're not gonna get you on one thing. How long has he had the operation? You can't say. Why? Operation's still going. <laughs> have you not clocked that? <laughs> no, because it doesn't make sense. He went to jail for it and then got back out and started doing it again. They would be surveilling this man. He's on probation. Repeat offenders, that happens all the time. My dad is one of them. Are you not on probation? If okay. he went to federal he prison, he would be on probation. First of all, it's called state prison yes. or federal, and you're gonna come out on parole, not on probation. Okay, so you're on parole? I'm not saying that I am. I'm not saying I'm not, I'm just telling you. <laughs> I'm saying that G Money is lying. He either talked to his attorney before he did this to figure out what he can and can't say, or he's not, he's not the answers. Either way, Bo, tell us the story. It was uh, uh, probably the most uh, awkward uh, bank robbery ever. I didn't intend to to do the robbery, but sometimes in life we have like, you know, emergency situation. And uh, yeah, I found a small bank and uh, I needed to leave Ukraine. So, and I found this small bank and I just walked there a couple of times, was checking like on security guard, if they changed the security guard or if that's the same, the same uh, guy. So the guy was like super big and kind of like uh, slow. I was working uh, back then as a performer, like, you know, when you wear a costume, Spider-Man, like Batman. Yeah. Uh, street performer. Uh, no, at the kids party. Yeah, so you, you can get a, like a, a mask, like from the company. Sometimes I, I had some costumes with me. I was kind of like behind the, the window. And usually when you approach the bank and you ask like, I need like 15,000, 20,000 cash right away. They don't have this amount of money. I'm not buying. I'm sorry. Both story. I see. Too long, I see. It's long, but that's not why I'm not buying it. Okay, so wh what are we doing? Like... Uh... <laughs> I want to get to the juicy stuff. Like, how'd it go down? In order to leave, I needed like 3, 4K maximum. So... To leave Ukraine? Yeah. I was like uh, standing behind the window of the bank. I was checking on people who tried to get cash from the lady. And intuitively, I felt like, okay, now I have to go. Maybe now, maybe now. So in order not to be on the cameras, I put this uh, stupid mask on. And when the guy was approaching the lady, I I rushed in and I just like, keep it quiet, guys. It was like kind of stupid a little bit. I, I screamed. Yeah, and I got the money. Actually, I didn't have any like bags or anything. What's crazy, bro? Sound real. It does sound yeah, real. Yeah, but, but but how do you do all that scouting <laughs> and you show up with no bags? Bro. He never even mentioned bro. the gun. The, the gun was with me. Okay, so you put the money in your pocket, you got the mask on, but you said you put the mask on when you're already in the bank? No, not like that. So imagine, okay, here's the here's the window. So I'm like behind the window and I see I see the customers who were walking in. So and I was like checking who is the who's the next one. So maybe so this lady, she just was doing something with cash, then another man walks in. And I feel that I, I felt that I had to go right now. And once I felt that it, it's time, I put the mask on. I take my stupid, stupid toy gun and I just. <laughs> hold on, bro. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So you're in the bank already. <laughs> no, no, look, so I'm outside outside of the bank. So I'm I'm standing behind the window and I'm looking through the window what's happening inside the bank. Okay. okay. I see the guy that he's he uh, he's kind of like approaching the register. I just took a hit like I'm like okay, whatever. If I don't leave, like my my life life is so I, I had to take initiative and I had to like walk in with confidence and just do something about this. Okay. So right. I just ran inside and I just approached this guy. I don't know how much money was in there, but turned out it, it was like around 12K later. So when I checked. When you put the mask on? So I see the guy that he, he was doing stuff with cash. Yeah. And before 
like walking into the bank, I put the mask on in order not to be seen in the cameras. You don't think to yourself, there's probably cameras right outside the bank. I thought about this. That's why I picked the corner where I, I'm not gonna be uh, like visible. It's, it's kind of like when you approach the glass, you're getting so close and the camera in the corner doesn't see you. I swear, I ain't gonna lie, man. I swear he's reliving this shit, though. <laughs> you're in there, you, you, you have the toy gun, you take the money. Then what happens? I exit through the door and uh, I saw that in one of the movies, I had to change uh, my clothes. So they're not gonna describe the colors of my like shoes, pants and like other okay. stuff. How does nobody catch you? I have a best friend. His name is like uh, Dimitri. And I stayed at his place outside the city. I just needed a couple of days to stay at the, uh, the place to see um, if it's gonna be like on the news. And then you, how long did you wait till you left to go to left the country? Around like, 30, 40 days. Bo, you said you purposely sought out smaller banks, right? Correct. Typically smaller banks, people with less money bank there. You're telling me that there was a guy that you randomly saw pulling out 12,000 US dollars and you just happened to get the right guy. Are y'all serious? 12,000 American dollars at a small bank, some random guy is just pulling that out. The one thing I noticed though is that all these three guys had their answers prepared, Bo had to think about it. I felt like Bo was reliving this No, he was recreating it in his, he's trying to create it as he's doing, he's improvising. Okay, Scar, take us home, baby. All right, so I was um, seeing this girl that worked at a women's clothing uh, store. She was telling me about the, the pickup and the drop off that they'll have it every Thursday. Oh, you know, I shouldn't be so specific. Whatever day it was, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I knew the, the, the pickup and the drop off for the money. So, and I knew every day they were making thousands like out of this uh, woman's clothing store. So one day, um, I mean, I, I'll hang out there with her. And then um, I was taking out the trash one day and uh, I was smoking a cigarette in the back and I just put my head back uh, against the wall. And I noticed that the wall was kind of flimsy, you know, and I, and I kind of touched it and uh, it kind of broke, it, it broke off. I had the idea like, Okay, like this wall goes straight into the restroom. So I had that, uh, me and that girl stopped talking because I was talking to someone else at that time. So after I stopped talking to her, I, I, I was down on my luck one day and I remember about that store. So I drove by it, I scoped it out, um, everything was closed. I parked around the corner. It was pretty easy to climb over the, over the building. So when I climbed over the building, I, I got my, my hammer and I kind of did a, a Shawshank Redemption kind of thing where I, I broke through the wall. Like it was just so easy. It was like almost like just drywall, like the rock was so old. Whatever the building was made out of, it was just crumbling. So I just made enough space for me to just kind of like jump in there, head in. And when I went in there, I fell on my head and, and, and um, I tried turning on the lights, but nothing would turn on. But I knew that the money was in the closet. So I, I opened up the closet and um, sure enough, the money was there Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, like it was already labeled. So I just got the bags, put them in my pocket. Um, there was coins, um, th there was a box of, ten, of dimes, nickels and quarters. So I just got the quarters, put them in my pocket, came back out. But when it came back out, I guess I was too heavy. I couldn't climb back out. Um, I ended up dropping the, the, the quarters, but I, when that happened, I, I, I was able to let go of some weight and able to climb over the wall and jump back down, go to my car, and I, it was really that easy. That, that felt like a real story to me. But there's a few things that, there's a few holes in that story. One of them being the girlfriend. I thought you said your girlfriend broke up with you after this happened. Yeah, we stopped talking, so. When you started telling the story, you were saying the girl that told you about it, y'all weren't, y she stopped seeing you because you were seeing another girl. Yeah, we, we stopped seeing each other. You stopped seeing each other before or after the burglary? Um, well, I already, bro I already broke up with her, so that's why they didn't feel so bad about robbing the place. When he told us at, earlier though, he said he broke up with her after the he did the robbery. He, he said he broke up with a girl, but he didn't specify which girl it was. Which girl are you talking about? The one that worked at the store. No, no, he, he did this guy worked at the store. Yes. He found out the information. From her. From her, they broke up, and then later on he thought about that whole thing and was like, oh, I should try and rob that place. His yeah. other new girl left him because when he robbed it, he ain't spent nothing of bread on her. So yeah. the new girl was the one you broke up with? Yeah, I broke up with both of them. Like after I, I stole that money, 
I had nothing but bad luck. I even got locked up. How'd you get caught? No, I didn't get caught for that. I got caught for something else. The next hole that I seen though, you said you broke through this wall, which I'm, I'm believe that. All of this money was just in a closet. Typically after a day, companies will put money in a safe. But it, yeah, it's a boutique. And 6,000 is about what you'd make. But you would put that in a safe, right? Usually they'll put the money made in a day in a safe. Well, let's think about this. We, now we have everybody's story. Nick's story. <laughs> To me was, I'm not buying it at all. I had faith in Dan, but after your story, like I'm just not buying the fact that y'all just abandoned this woman. Get on a train and leave? G-Money, I believe a little bit more after the story, but he's, he's tiptoeing around the f***ing, what he's everything. doing and everything. He's not answering <laughs> questions. That would be criminal life. Yeah. Bo wow, look at, look at, you saw what Bo just did. What you just do, Bo? What, I, I just checked the chain. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, trying to rob him? Both stories sound crazy too. The yeah. only story that I was like, okay, maybe, was honestly G Money. Scar, you're a great storyteller because if you didn't do it, I want you just to like read me a bedtime story at night. I want you to come over every night. I'm, I'm gonna be tucked in. You can tuck me in too if you want to. I don't know which way you play. But um, you would not let Scar in your house. <laughs> I mean, I'd have other people around. <laughs> All right, we got to vote. Lawrence, who do you think it is? Oh man, I'm not gonna lie. Like Bo, you, either you throwing me off crazy. I want to eat. I'm definitely gonna go with Bo or Scar. Honestly, it's I'm a I'm gonna go with Bo. It sounds stupid, but yeah. I probably go with Nick. I'm gonna say my Nick. Um, okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, I definitely think it's Scar. Um, right. Actually, no, I don't. I definitely don't think it's. I don't know who it is, but I think Scar. You had me captivated, Scar, and you've got eyes that wouldn't lie to me. No, I, I really enjoyed your story. And if you crafted it, I think you did a beautiful job. I want to go there, um, cause I don't know the, the amount of money, the Italy thing, but I don't, I don't believe it because of the shoes. And I, I believe if you've <laughs> ever been to Italy, you would wear nicer shoes than that. So I, uh, most believable to me, honestly, bro, I think it's Scar. I think Scar was chilling and came up on a lick and then okay. just received bad karma after that. I think all of these stories are ridiculous. I don't believe none of this. I really was set on Scar, but the chipping away with a rusty hammer because you happen to hit your head on the thing sounds crazy to me. Bo, you just having to watch the one dude in Ukraine with 12,000 American dollars to pull out and had a mask from children's theater he was doing sounds crazy. G Money, I think the jewelry is fake, but the story sounds the realest. So I'm gonna go G Money. Nick, I just don't think you drove to Colorado with that 85,000. Dan, I don't think it's you, only because if it's you, that's pretty f***ed up what y'all did. And I'm, I'm just hoping it's not you. There's a little boy growing up in Italy right now watching this video being like, what the f***? Dan, if you take a step forward at the end of this video, Tim needs to come here and explain himself. I'm gonna start a podcast just to figure out what the f happened if you take a step forward. So I'm gonna cross you off. I don't think it's Bo. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I love Bo. <laughs> uh, only because I agree with you. I think the odds of you going to a small bank and getting someone pulls out $12,000 is the odds that are so low that I'm willing to bet against those odds and cross you off. G Money and Scar, I think some of those stories are real, but I don't think the, the robbing story is yours. If you were still in that lifestyle to some degree, you wouldn't be here today. You wouldn't be on camera in front of millions of people. Your face is being out there. So I'm gonna cross you off. I gotta go with Scar. We voted Scar. We've been wrong a lot lately. Will the real robber step forward? I told y'all. I told y'all. So Dan, you really just robbed somebody in Italy, oh. got a random kid running around, and Claudia somewhere as a single mother. I trusted you, Scar. Where's Claudia today? <laughs> no idea, we never saw her again. Claudia, if you out there, comment below and show us your son. Claudia, I am going to find you, and I'm going to help you. So Nick, was any of your story true? No. G Money, was any of your story true? A lot of it. Bo, how much of your story was real? What do you think? <laughs> Scar, how much of your story was real? None of it. Okay, Dan, you go to Italy for three weeks. This is true. Yes. Your buddy, Tim, gets this girl pregnant. This is true. We are not sure about that. She was infatuated with him. She was so in love with him. Did he bust a nut in her? Yes. Within the week? I mean, that makes sense. You fall in love. You're never gonna see her so again. So you go to this bank. All that is true. You making a scene. 
him getting the money, you walk out, you get on a train the next day or the same day? The same night, yeah. You go to Naples yeah. and you disappear. Yes. You come back to America. I uh, come back to America. We went to Switzerland after that, England for a little bit. We're still in Europe for a while. Somebody write a movie on this man now. And you never got caught. And now the limitations pass. Wow. Hey, man, that's fire, brother. I'm talking about dog. He abandoned a pregnant woman. We don't know if she's pregnant. If we got you, Tim, and Claudia in a room, would you be down and talk it all through? Absolutely. 50,000 likes. I will try to make this happen. That being said, on a day's work, good night. my bag and I got to brag. I do this shit for real. When we was down and we had nothing, we had to share a meal. We put the shit in overdrive with no staring well. Uh... I, I was gonna say something. I think his story is like the most believable so far. How do you feel about your story, Bob? Right. I mean, it's cool. <laughs>